Hello and welcome back to Seaside Garage. Today I want to work on the Citroën Mahari. This is going to be a refurbishment of the rear axle. This is the same for the 2CV, the Diane and the Mahari. What I'm going to do is to tear down the rear axle, clean it up, fix what needs to be fixed, so it's ready to be fitted on the new chassis. And here we have the rear axle in all its glory in my wise. This is the first time I'm really going to use this new wise area of my, <laughs> of my garage. Um, it's really nice because it's really sturdy up there. I, I do need some more lighting though, so I hope it won't be a big, too big, too much of a problem today. What I'm going to do now is to remove the two swing arms on both sides. Then I need to remove these struts that uh, broke off. I had to cut them, so I need to heat them up and try to take them off. The swing arm is just fitted to the shaft with two big bearings, so it's just free to, to spin like this. I don't think there is anything really wrong with those bearings, so I'm just going to clean them up, up and reuse them. Um, but I need to get in there and loosen up the stuff to take it apart. Right here is a plastic cover that is just there to avoid getting crap and stuff in there. And then in here is something that looks really weird. And first time I saw it, I was really puzzled. There is a coil in there, a long, long, long coil in there. It looks really different. <laughs> this is the brake line. And the reason why it's coiled like this is that this system doesn't have any brake hoses. It's just metal line all the way from the front of the car and all the way back here. And the coil bit is just there to be able to move it like this without fatiguing the metal. If, it's, if it was just a corner like this without the coil bit, it would snap pretty, pretty quickly in that area. So it's just another way of doing the same that a rubber line would, would be able to do. Maybe not in this configuration actually. So it's a clever and very simple uh, way of sorting that issue. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull it out like this because this is going to be changed. I got a brand new one. So I'm just going to cut it in here and then we can take it out. And then I would really like to, to loosen up this nut because this one holds on the brake line inside the tube. Like this. You might notice it just snapped. I don't know if that... It was out of shot, but it just snapped down there by the <laughs> drum brake. So it's about time to change these. So as you can see, the difference between a closed environment and an open environment. And this is interesting because a lot of people are actually worried about the, the, the inside of metal when you weld on stuff, because sometimes you can't get to the backside to paint it. Um, but if you can't get to the backside, you most likely won't have a lot of rust issues actually. So um, <laughs> this just shows because this is from the 70s. But oh yeah, of course, this is painted though, so it's not exactly the same, but it is really protecting metal a lot to be inside. So next up, we need to loosen up this big nut out here, this castellated nutty thing. Nut thing, I don't think you can say nutty thing. Um, there's a special tool for this. I don't have that, so I'm going to do it my way. Firstly though, I need to open up that cutter pin. No, split pin, I think this is called. This is called a split pin, yeah. Like that. That locks it in place. Then I'm going to take this and tap it around here. There we go. And yeah, if I had the right tool, I wouldn't damage the edges out here. Most likely, but seriously, that doesn't matter. And the tool is not expensive, but it's not cheap either. So you could actually make it yourself pretty easy. But this works. And I have to say, it wasn't my idea. I got a tip from my good friend who knows a lot about these cars to just do it this way. And it works. So this is the old kind of style. This is not a uh, normal oil control ring. It's a filled kind of ring. I think I'm just going to reuse it, so uh, I'm going to keep this away from everything. 
So now it should be able to just come undone. As you can see in here, it's SKF bearings. Those are nice bearings. Oh, yeah, there we go. I actually catch the bearing with my feet so it didn't land on the concrete. <laughs> Sometimes I'm impressed about my own reactions. Um, this I am hoping to just clean up and reuse. So yeah, this bearing won't be safe because I had to be rough with it. And also the seal on the inside needs to be changed. So at least one bearing and one seal. I think one bearing more on the other side because I think it will be the same. I might, might just consider changing all of them actually, but we'll see. I already removed the arm on the other side as, and, and as you can see some moisture had, has gotten into here so it's a bit rusty. The sealing or the uh, seating surface for the bearing is just fine on this side. I hope it is as, on this side as well. If it is, it's just a matter of cleaning it up and making sure that moisture doesn't come in in the future. So uh, new seals most likely. Next up I need to try to extract these snapped off uh, studs. Oh, I actually cut them. They are going through some aluminum and then into metal, so they are just fused together. I'm going to heat up this area a lot and then grab it with one of these and then hopefully I can get them out. Yeah, there we go. And then I'm just going to try to do the rest of them and then take you back in a second. So I got all the studs out. As you can see, I snapped a corner off this. This is aluminum block between the uh, chassis and the axle. Don't ask me why. There's probably a good reason, but they tend to become pretty uh, corroded or whatever it's called when aluminum does that. It's actually not that bad, but I have already bought new, new ones of these because I can remember from last time I did a uh, Citroen Mahari that these were completely gone. So this is a lot better actually, and if it didn't, if it hadn't snapped, then I could could have just reused it. But I already bought them, and uh, yeah, new ones are going on. Like that. That's all done for now on this one, this tube. Um, so this one will be the first real thing to go into the sandblaster. I'm just removing undercoating because that really won't do much good to the blasting media and it takes forever to get off. Let's put it in. Next I'm gonna go ahead and tear down the swing arm. This part of the uh, swing arm is actually a damping thing. This avoids the uh, swing arm to start bouncing or the tire to start bouncing. It's just a, a weight inside a, a tube with some oil in it. I'm not really sure actually, but it's counter counterbalancing the movement. Um, I'm not going to remove this though, because even though it's bolted on, I know from experience from the last time I took one of these apart that it's very likely will snap. So I'm just going to leave it as B as it is and then clean it up as best as I can and paint it. But I want to take off the brake drum. Like that. Then in here we got this big nut that I would like to take off. It has been off a couple of times before I can see. Uh, this one is really, really tight. Just opening up the nut because it's been locked. Ah, there we go. <laughs> that was tough. Jesus Christ.
Next up, I need to take this drum off and you need a puller tool for that. And some of you might notice that I have had this wheel hanging on the wall for quite a while, normally with a piece of cord around it. Uh, this is not just a decoration or a wire holder. It is actually a puller tool made of an old 2CV rim. In the middle, I welded on a nut so I can put this piece of threaded bar through it. And by fitting this onto the drum, like that, and then I can just tighten up this and pull off the drum. I might destroy some of the hardware in there uh, for the brakes. I, sh I could have tried to release it a bit more in there to avoid that, but I don't really care because I'm going to change everything inside of there, so it doesn't really matter. But then I'm just going to tighten up this. And it pulls off the drum. Like that. And the drum is off using this very crude puller tool. And you need a tool like that. It's impossible to get them off otherwise. In my experience at least. And then I'm going to remove all the braking hardware and, label, putting in, and put them in a bag labeled with the label left side because I'm keeping track of stuff on this. I'm also keeping track on the bearings that I'm going to reuse, that they're going into the same race. I think that is a wise thing to, a wise thing to do. The brakes are not that used. They are serviceable, but I have bought new stuff for all this because I want it to be tipped up. And it's also because I think I might end up selling the Mahari at one point. And, uh, Having stuff all good and nice is a good thing when that time comes. Very simple setup this. I'm not gonna save the shoes, but I'm gonna save all other hardware because I don't know how much comes with the kit. And then I'm actually going to tape up this area because I'm going to put it into the sand and I don't want to roughen up this surface. So now I'm going to go ahead and clean it up with a wire wheel before putting it into the sander to just avoid destroying my media completely. And then I'm going to sand it up and get it ready to, uh, to paint. But um, it's blasted. I shouldn't really touch it with my fingers right now because it's really would like to rust at the moment. I could maybe take off a bit more, but this should be fine. So this just needs some paint now. Firstly, I'm going to give it a coat of primer. And then tomorrow it will get the main coat. Like that. And after that layer of white paint, which is, which is actually a rust prohibiting um, primer, I applied one layer of black paint. This is actually 24 hours later. I need to wait another 24 hours to paint the rest of this because it needs two layers with a lot of waiting time in between. But it's going to look pretty nice, I think. So this is it. Both the swing arms have been dismantled, cleaned up. And I've started painting them. The same goes to the, with the tube. So I need to wait another 24 hours before applying black paint, then another 24 hours for another layer. And then the rear axle should be ready to be reassembled. I have a lot of cleaning to do because inside of here, where the bearing resides, I need to clean up out all the dust that I just forced into there. It's not going to be a big deal though. 
And then I'm going to change the inside bearings because I had to use quite a lot of force to get them out, so I'm not going to risk them. Uh, the outside one seems just fine, uh, and I could take them out really carefully, so I'm just going to fit them back in after a good clean. They are really expensive bearings, so I don't want to change them if it's not necessary, and they are big bearings, so I, know, I think they will last for a long time. I'm going to do pretty much the same in one of the next videos on the front axle, but I think I won't go as far as I did on this one. I think I'm going to take off the swing arms and blast them and paint them. The tube in between, though, got the steering rack inside of it, and the steering rack on this one is just completely perfect. I have never experienced a 2CV with that little play in it. There's actually no play at all in the steering rack. So I cannot really see any point in ripping that apart to, uh, to just put it back in. Um, if I throw that thing in the sand blaster, I would need to take it apart because there would be sand all over the, in, the, in the grease and the, uh, and the steering rack. So that's not a good idea. So I think I'm just going to wire wheel that part and paint it and then take off the, uh, the swing arms and clean them up. Um, so, But this would be all the progress for now because I will have to wait a couple of days drying time, which is boring. And then I'm going to reassemble this part of the Mahari. It's going to be nice. And this was the first real test of my sandblasting cabinet. And it's a really nice tool. I'm really happy about it. It does take a lot of time. And you might notice that on the, on the axle there was still a bit of rusty colors. I think all the scales and all that is gone. It's completely clean to, to paint. But I could go ahead and blast it even more to get a better surface but it takes such a long time to get it perfect when the, sp when the pieces are this big. And I think it is, oh, I know it is a million times better than just using a wire wheel or something like that. So this is nice. Anyway, thank you for watching this part one of the rear axle in a couple of days time. The next part will come out. I still need some parts for it actually. And of course the painting. So. Uh, See you in the next one.